That was amazing. <laughs> I'm glad, because I, wa I watched this earlier today in my office just to refresh my memory, and I was doing the same thing, and I was by myself. I was just clapping and dancing. Um, I'm Jim Halterman, the West Coast Bureau Chief of TV Guide Magazine. Thanks for being here today. Um, <laughs> As you just saw, there's so many great moments in Hairspray Live and Twitter and the internet. It blew up when the show was on, but it blew up a little bit more when Jennifer Hudson came on the screen, right? Yeah. Right? The hair, the outfit, the voice, it was just it was all amazing. So I'm excited that she's actually here to talk about making this great film and everything in her career. So let's bring her out, Jennifer Hudson. gonna have me crying thank you y'all like was making a lot of noise like <laughs> back there <I> was <laughs> it was thank so you. fun to be outside the room listening to you guys watch the show it was amazing it was amazing <laughs> thank you thank you yay I'm going to take all of you home with me just so I'm you know, just getting off my couch can get an applause <laughs> it's like amazing um I, th this was so amazing. I mean, I watched it when it was it aired last year, and it was it was just great. And your your part just blows up. Um, tell me first of all, just your knowledge of hairspray going into this, because it's something we know whether you saw it on stage or in the film. But what was your experience before you stepped into this? Well, I mean, I'm I've always been a theater lover and a musical lover. Um, I saw I saw the movie. I didn't get to actually see the actual play production, but I did see the movie. Um, and it was actually when I was doing Color Purple that it came about me doing this. And all my Color Purple cast members was like, Jennifer, you need to do it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm doing it. You know what I mean? But, you know, I've, I, it's always the music that catches my attention with any project, you know what I mean? And so I was always familiar with the, the music, like even with Dreamgirls, I was always familiar with the, the music, whether I didn't even know the character or not. It's like, but the... I was always connected to the music. Okay. And Motormouth Maybell, of course, we've seen her played by a lot of different people. Queen Latifah played her in the movie. But you know, what did, what did you take from what you knew of the play going into this? Because you can kind of you can either think too much about what other people have done or you can just say, let me make this my own and step into it. That's always tough. You know, when you have like iconic stories, iconic characters and that's memorable and different people have their own interpretations of them. For me, it's like, okay. I always, first of all, think about what my mama used to say. All you can do is the best you can do. So I always, seriously, I look at a role and say, okay, such and such did it this way, they did it this way, and I'll just take a glimpse at it and look at it. But then I always like to try to make things my own, but still take from others and learn from them or be inspired from it. And then say, okay, now how can I Jenniferize that? <laughs> and make it my own. And literally in this production, when it was live, Jesus, Motor Mouth literally came to life right before I came through that curtain. I was like, girl, you better get into character, find it, you know. <laughs> and I was like, you are not Jennifer, you are Motor Mouth. And I gave myself a talking to. And I walked out, and I don't know what happened after that. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Um, I was on set one of the days during rehearsal, it was a day you were not there, but it was, I, I saw it before everybody was in costume, so it was early, and everybody was just dancing in the street and all that, um, but tell me, so fun to watch. tell me the rehearsal process for this, one, just outside a costume, and then once the costume goes on, that, that wig must have weighed, how much did that Those, wig weigh? The, oh, Jesus, that wig? <laughs> the costumes, y'all? That changed the game completely, but we rehearsed, at least I rehearsed for a month leading up to, you know, that one night only production of it and it, it happened in phases but Kenny the director always told us you never want to go backwards you should always you know progress and move forward and your character should continually develop but you know everything should always feel fresh and new each and every time so that was something we always had to keep in mind and strive for you know because if we were taking a step backwards we were in trouble but um in it I feel like it really started to come to life when, because first of all, let me say this, the music and hairspray, just a song is a script alone. Yeah. 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 That, I mean, it's like, you. Ooh, I'm trying to grasp it now, hold on y'all. Okay, so like, 
learning the music, which is telling the story, you know? So you're learning it musically, you're, the rhythms. Yeah. Woo! Everything was like, okay, I need a class just for the rhythm of Blonde and Beautiful alone. Then it's another process to learn the lyric alone. Then I have to figure out how to get my voice adjusted to sing through these songs and be able to keep it. And all the cast will be like, no, she's singing full out. No, because you're only going to do what you rehearse. So that's just my system alone where it's like, okay, I need to sing through this just so you can feel it in the body. Whether you mess up or not, once you do it all, then you can know when you do fall, how to get back up, how to correct it. Because we going live and we can't mess this up. Yeah, exactly. One shot. That's what, that's what, we, I'm so serious. That is what went through my mind the entire time. I'm like, okay. Taking all the notes, taking it in. Also, all of us trying to find our groove together because it's a, a team effort. It's a unit. And I learned that on Broadway doing Color Purple. Like, it's not about one character you know, we all carry the story, so we all had to move together and find our rhythm together and also trust each other and learn each other. So it's a lot of different phases in the process of that. Like, my head is spinning just thinking about, like, okay, yeah, how did we do that? Well, and, and I, did, I, did, <laughs> I did see you in The Color Purple. Oh, but later, congratulations. Coming. It was Thank amazing. You. Thank you. Um, but talk about that, because there Thank is... You. There is a lot of choreography that goes into any show like that where everybody's moving around, but add cameras because it says a TV production. How, how, mu how much I forgot did, about that part. Yeah, the cameras <laughs> are right there. Um, but how did that change your process? Just because there are cameras that you have to work around and know that they're right yeah, on you. Yeah, because then that's when the technical side kicks in. And for me, now being on, have been, been on a theater stage versus television versus film, versus even music videos. It's all different languages. So what do you do when now you got the language of theater, of a theater house, which is very technical, and when you project, you gotta make sure that your voice hits the back of the room and the audience in the back of the room can hear you just the same as the front. But then, for me, I always felt this, I'm more of a, a natural actress, which is more like to the camera, which is more conversational. And it took me a minute to just figure out, okay, so how? Do I split the difference? Now, as loud as I sing, I actually talk very, well, right now you probably can't tell, but I actually, <laughs> I actually, actually, I'm always told by my directors, you have to project. You have to, and I'm like, what do they mean? But then I was like, how do I interpret what is being said to me, like project? Well, that don't necessarily mean yell at you, you know what I mean? But then how can I project to you and still keep it conversational? Which is a more of a theater thing where you project and make it, which is more technical. But then I'm used to acting in film where it's more like, okay, how you doing? My verse is saying, how you doing today? You know, I mean, it's, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, energy has to be a part of it. So it was difficult to figure out once the cameras came in that changed things to me, to us. And then also the dance with the cameras. You know, being conscious of your angles, but the set is still more like a theater kind of setting, which you don't have to worry about that. But now it's like, okay, okay, we didn't put pretty much Broadway on camera, and there's a camera right there, and then we would set the whole thing and then have to redo it for the cameras and readjust to it and still make it natural. You know? So, yeah. That's a lot to think about, right? Well, and, and you know, yeah. Uh, just just wa watch <laughs> watching this production, you see the camera's very active. It's not just sitting back soaking it all in like it's in there, yeah. which is part of the fun of watching it, but yeah, that's that's kind of Yeah, and it's something that you have to be conscious of just as well as your character, your lines, your delivery. You got to be conscious of the camera, not where it's like, okay, the camera right there. You know what I mean? But in a natural way where you can still translate in the proper way and still be conscious of your angles, of your delivery, of the presence of the camera, of not getting in the way of the camera. Or, you know, all of those things matter in a live show you're doing one time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, you've got, you guys all pulled it off. It was, it was amazing. Um, talk about just your approach to Motormouth a little bit more, like just as a character and what you thought about the time that the show set in and also the relevance of today, because that was one thing I got, even just being, being in there for rehearsal, is how relevant 
Hairspray is for 2017. Yeah. Um, I guess when things are real, they, they're always relevant, you know? And I always, we all found it like kind of odd, but at the same time, because of the situation of today, we didn't have to stretch so far. Like myself, I've done a lot of period pieces. I've done Dream Girls, I've done Secret Life of Bees, and they're all based in the 60s, you know? So back then, it's like, okay, I have to go do research in the 60s to see what was happening, what was going on, get in that mindset, you know, to figure out what was happening in that time. But oddly, when we were doing this production of Hairspray, I was like, guys, we don't even have to stretch that far. Like, because we're we, we're experiencing similar things right now today, so especially in the scene of like even blind and beautiful or um, just the whole message of the whole storyline, it's so true to right now, and we didn't have to even really do much research for it to even have to pull from somewhere else because it's like, guys, we can relate. And another interesting thing that I noticed, what we all noticed while we were doing um, our rehearsals for it, the way, the, because of the way the story is designed, the black kids were with the black kids and the white kids was with the white kids. Okay, let me say it again. The white cast members were with the white cast members and we were never together and the black kids was with the black cast members because we kind of never did anything together. So we were already experiencing it in our rehearsals, if that makes any sense. So we were really living it, although we didn't mind being together, we love each other, we thought the, the nature of this was silly. Like, this don't make sense to us, you know? But we would look around and be like, we never get to see you guys. Or I'd be like, oh, I didn't even know you were a part of the production, you know? <laughs> like. Until we happen to have a scene or we happen to walk over to somebody else's set while they were rehearsing or, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. So we were kind of living it. Just, yeah, just by the design. Wow. So what about Motormouth? Just, she's, she, you can tell she's a very forceful woman at this time. What, did, what were your thoughts just about playing her and making sure you inhabited that about her? <sighs> well, yes. Motormouth is just, first of all, she re reminds me so much of all the powerful women that I grew up around in my family. Um, and I, I feel like we have a lot of, 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 of women like that, but I think that's one of the things that helped me connect and relate to Motormouth. It's just like the power that she possessed, the presence that she had, the message that she carried. And the difficult part for me was like, I'm not this much older than my cast members. We're all the same age. And so it's like one minute we just hanging out like, hey, what's up? What are we doing? You know, this and that. Hey, y'all want to go do this? And then they're like, okay, now you're the mother. And Kenny be like, no, you're the mother of the group. And it's like, okay. Right. You know, so it's like, it's that dynamic. So how do I uh, find that? Because it's a, 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 I guess it would be an age difference. But then an, an experience as well. You know, but it was like, okay, well, I've lived life. I ain't been here long, but I lived a whole lot now in my 35 years. Okay, I was 29. But, <laughs> like, so I wanted to tap into her wisdom um, and find that in myself and my own, you know, to be able to connect it. Because anytime you play a character, I don't know if any of you guys ever noticed, at least for myself, I always find something in that character that's very much like myself. Does that happen to you guys too? And I'll be like, is this weird? Like every character. So it's like, okay, what is like me that's like motor mouth? Okay, she, she has this posture, she's strong, she has this presence, she has this voice, she, has, she loves to bring people together. That's something I love to do. I love to see people on one accord. I love to see people be who they are, the fullest to the, the extent of it. Well, that's motor mouth. So it's like those are things that I would sit with and find those characteristics that I felt that was similar to myself to be able to embody motor mouth. Yeah. yeah. Well, you talked about the costumes aiding in that, helping just get in the character. 
but even like you had these great shoes and the gold that gold pantsuit. I, mean, I, I personally <laughs> love the gold pantsuit. That was heavy. That's why I was. Like, <laughs> oh my god! So on top of all that, and knowing that the outfits will help you get into the character, you still have to like try not to fall and make sure everything looks good. And thank God for my lovely what? cast members. <laughs> I was gonna say because they we helped each other <laughs> for sure. Were there challenges when you guys were just doing rehearsal in costume, just figuring out? Oh wow, this is whole different. With oh this yes, heavy outfit. It, it definitely. We had to sit in them for a while, and I I even requested more time. Like I just need to fill this out or like. Like at the very end when we snatched the, the jumpsuit off, that took a lot of practice. Because <laughs> first of all, it's heavy. We had to move the snaps a million times. Um, but I want to go back though. I want to say one more thing about like the character of Motormouth. What was most important to me is like, because she's like the pillar of the storyline and she carried the message, which Kenny, the director reminded me of all the time, like she carries the message of this whole thing. You know, it's about hairspray, it's about this, it's about dancing, it's about all these things, but the underlying thing is. And I was like, I can't, I have to hit those points because this is the, this is the, the message of the story. And it was like, how can you capture something like that in just so few scenes? That's so important and so crucial. So that was like, the, to me, the weight on my shoulders. Like, okay, I really want to nail that because I knew she carried that message and that's the power of Motormouth that she had, you know? That was crucial to be given. So, but back to the dress. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was wowed a little bit. No, I was that's like, so yeah, important. That's that's cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, we've, we've all been big fans of this resurgence of the, the musical on television. Mm -hmm. The Wiz Live and Sound of Music, a lot of, and there, you know, some are better than others, but this was definitely one of the better ones. Um, but talk, why do you, why do you think that is? Just why do you think people are responding to this? Because there was a time you didn't see musicals, or variety shows weren't really on anymore, but now they're definitely coming back. Why do you think that is right now? I feel like it. Everything has its own season and its time, and musicals is definitely one of those things. Like they go away, and then all of a sudden they take over the world. You know, um, one, um, it's just the art in it like it covers every facet of what we do and what we love you know it's like the music is given the care it deserves it's music that's about something the characters is about something the stories are about something and that resonates with people and people who love entertainment you know and i think theater and musicals whatever will always have a platform and it clearly always has its own season you know and when it comes around, it shines. Yeah. yeah. Um, your cast is amazing in this. And I even even your first scene when you kind of have a little tussle with Kristen Chenoweth, yeah. little tiny Kristen Chenoweth. <laughs> it's, okay. go ahead. I'm not going to talk. You can tell a Kristen Chenoweth story. <laughs> At the table read? <laughs> Y'all, this woman sang us down. <laughs> she hid every note that was on that paper and be un. It was just so inspiring to watch her go into care because she's a, I mean, she's an icon and a legend. And I literally sat right across from her and I was like, well, what I'm going to do? <laughs> Ain't nothing else to be done. Like, it was just, I was literally sitting there like this, like, oh, oh wait, motor mouth turn now? Like, what do I say? What do I do? And, and every single one, I felt like it was extremely beyond well cast, you know, like, and then Another thing, like everybody's heart was so in it. We all wanted to be there. We all still talk to each other to this day, you know? And it, I just think it was the, the right union, you know? But that table read, <laughs> they should have filmed that. I was like, no, they ready to go live right now. <laughs> and that was like, what, in like, what was that, like in August? And I was like, I just got the script, y'all. <laughs> I'm not ready. But the, everybody else was ready. Did, did you did you actually sing your song during the table read or did I you didn't. Okay. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm serious, y'all. The whole cast. Okay. So Mr. Manager, you in this room. Okay. Remember that day. <laughs> Cause they was like, oh guys, you're just gonna read through the script. You know, everything's gonna be okay. But and then I get in there and I was like, yeah. well, I haven't had time to read through the script, you know. Let's just okay, great, we'll go sit in there. And then all of a sudden, you know, they just started just singing. They damn near went into choreography, sir. No, I'm serious. No, somebody hear me. Look, and I'm just sitting there like, but I thought we was just reading through the script. Ari was ready. Christian was ready. Derek was ready. 
it was only like maybe one character that wasn't cast. And even the reader who was reading from, he was ready. <laughs> and you got Jennifer Hudson sitting on the side of you like, I'm sorry, but can you tell me what page we on? <laughs> and Ken and, and uh, Neil and Craig, <laughs> <laughs> I'm only a little example of the rest of the cast, okay? This is how we were. Neil and Craig were the producers. They was like, oh, Jennifer doesn't know what's going on. Oh, my God. Let's go roll her track, roll her track. She's not ready. And I'm like, I, I thought we was just reading through the script. I didn't, and it's like, we didn't expect anyone to be prepared to sing, but that's just how passionate everybody was about doing it. Like, everybody in there, it was their dream role. They couldn't wait to do it. And they were so excited that they, they hopped right in right there and I had to play catch up. I was like, I'm gonna catch up y'all. I promise, I promise, yeah. That's great. How, how was working with Harvey? Cause Harvey, just his voice alone is amazing. But how was it to work with him? Um, just especially in, in <sighs> drag as he is in this role. Working with Harvey is just like, I think we all just sat in awe, you know, just watching him, working with him. Also getting like, really he talks like that, you know? Yeah. Like getting used to his voice. <laughs> That's his voice. It and is. and just seeing him, you know, like go into that character is just really amazing just to witness and to be around. And I love to just sit and try to learn from whoever I'm around, whenever I'm there. Like, you know, what can I take from that? And just and then he was so gracious and kind with all of us and patient and very supportive because obviously we'll go to him like, OK, are we doing right? Is it OK? And, you know, what you think about this? So he was always there. And again, it was just amazing just to work with him and then to watch it work. It felt, for me, it was like when I did Dream Girls and watching Eddie Murphy. You know, it's just like, uh, okay, we, wait, I'm just watch, you know? If you, if you guys didn't know, Harvey was in the, the Broadway production when Tony yes. and was just amazing. And yes. it was so great to have him back in this. Um, let's talk about your songs a little bit. You had a couple songs in here. Any of them, were any of them daunting to you or were you excited about them? How did you feel about each of them going into it? Well, uh, Big Blonde and Beautiful. That song was the devil. It would mean it in a good way. It was just, it was a challenge. Like again, the rhythms in the song, the lyrics in the song, the journey in the song, and the fact that it's not a song. As a singer, I sing too. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> No, but it's a difference. On an album, you're singing a song. But when it's in a character, you're interpreting something. You're, you know, it's a journey, it's a story. The story is progressing. You know, you're taking someone on a journey. So it's like, it's one thing to learn a melody and then to learn the words, but to understand, okay, and thankfully, this is something I've always done, even as a little kid, I used to, when I would get a solo in church, okay, would, you want me to sing this? Okay, and I would go word for word, okay, but what does this mean? And what are you trying to get out of this? And what's the meaning of it? So that's how I look at when I'm singing as a character versus as a artist. It's two completely different things, you know? So for Big, Blonde, and Beautiful, think about the transition of it. It starts out, we, we in the juke joint, you know, in her, her, her record shop, having a party for some kids, and then it turns into a march. So we, we're progressing, the story's progressing. So we're taking, the, it's the bridge. And so it takes a understanding to be able to interpret it, to be able to deliver it, because if I don't understand it, how can I expect you to understand it? You know, so with that, it was a process from, okay, the rhythm which you literally gotta sit and clap. Go back to music theory class, clap out the rhythms because they change. Lord, don't forget the dance moves that they gonna add. <laughs> or the marks and the camera angles. So that's just like, okay, okay, th that'll be another day. And then there's the, <laughs> every day. Um, <laughs> and then when you're learning music, and all of this is a part of it for me, I just like to be real. Like, even for Broadway or uh, doing Color Purple, even in here, thank God for that experience because it helped prepare me for this one and know how to, to be able to approach it. Like even in learning a song like Big and Blonde and Beautiful, Big, Blonde and Beautiful, my son likes to sing the song. So I, 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 don't sing that because I got to sing it like this. And if I hear you sing it like that, then that's going to throw me off. <laughs> so I, I have to isolate, don't, <laughs> I have to isolate myself. 
so I can learn what I'm supposed to interpret. Because think about it, in theater music, it's on sheet music. So you can't go off into the wilderness singing whatever riff you want like you can on the record. It's a certain interpretation. You have to respect it the same. You know what I mean? So that's something else to consider, too. So going into the music, as you can see, is a whole lot for me. Like, at least that's how I see it. Um, and so, and then it was paragraphs of lyrics. Like, each verse was like, what, about three pages? <laughs> and I'm like, and then to mark it, like, what helps me learn like I'm literally going through the process in my mind of my process. Music is like mirroring it to a motion, a step. Okay, motor mouth, you know, I look this way when I say it. Uh, you know, um, and those things help as well. Like, what is she doing in that moment? You know, what is this moment? What's the message of the moment? So all of that stuff matters. For that long, so it's about eight minutes, huh? <laughs> I just want to pause for a second. Everybody's noticing her nails. Okay. I'm I was saying, waiting. I'm just saying. Every, I mean. Thank you. I mean, I'm having nail envy. And I, could I just say, I was trying to be colorful. You did it. You did it. And I, I hate, I don't mean to disrespect nobody, but Motor Mouth would bring the girls too. Because we would have to walk around on set with the boobs, sir. Be me and Christian, it was like we would have to speak to each other like this to get into character. It was an assignment. I'm serious. Call Kenny. So I thought I'd bring them because it was a motor mouth thing okay. to do. Okay. All good. Um, <laughs> I had to point that out. Um, I, I know where I've been. I mean, talk about a powerhouse of a song. Is that a whole different kind of challenge? Because it's a whole different kind of song, but it's also... It's a showstopper. It's it's huge. How did you approach that song? Whew. Well, the thing for me with a song like that is to try not to get too overwhelmed with it. Because you then you'll lose the whole message of everything. But still embody the emotion to get it across. And I remember when we were rehearsing the scene and doing the scene, like, we would all start crying. And it's like, okay, y'all know I'm a crybaby. So if I look at y'all, I'm a really go in and I'll be, ah, be, be. we cannot have that on live television but um, <laughs> it was more of a you know just like un understanding the moment that was needed in that moment you know and that's something we sat with a while and I think it's it was as simple as no matter t how many times we rehearsed it it's like no, no, no. I don't want it to ever feel rehearsed. I want it to be a moment. I want it to be a journey. I want to live in that moment and experience it for what it is in that time. No matter what happened in that rehearsal, the rehearsal before, whatever. Like, it should just be a whole new something. And I remember by the time I got to the end of the song, I didn't even know I had sang the song. And I literally got to the end and I was like, how did I get here? Like, and it was going into the end of it. And I'm like, I felt like, I ain't gonna lie, don't laugh, but I felt like I had a baby. And I was like, I made it to the end of the song. And the hardest thing was not to get too emotional, too emotional, because it was emotional for all of us because we still live in a time like that. And if you're really in that moment, you understand the power of that moment. I don't know, I think she nailed it. What do you think? Yeah. Nailed it. Um, in that song in particular, do you have a favorite line in that song? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, yeah, it's, I think it's Joy is Telling Me Now. Oh. Oh. Wait, okay, it was. You got uh, the microphone. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and then I know <laughs> where I've been. Did that just happen? I think that just happened. Oh, that's um, what happened to me. <laughs> How does it feel to even sing just that that line? How are you feeling right now? It takes there? me under every time. Like, yeah, like, I, 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 
it comes from a a real right a a I don't even know how to explain it, you know? And sometimes it's like, I don't know, maybe for all of us, you, you sometimes are outside of yourself at times. And it was really one of those moments. And again, as I told the director, I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna feel in this moment. I don't know where I'm gonna go in this moment, but I'm going with it, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna let my emotion lead me. And I go off, always go off of my instinct and how I feel. And sometimes it surprises me. Yeah. I mean, it's great that we're talking about this in the production was several months ago, but I'm curious as a performer, do you leave your past performances behind like the color purple role or dream girl? Do you kind of leave them in the past or are they still like very present with you? I'm gonna see if y'all can relate to this. Um, for me, when I first look at a project, y'all, we see the technical things. So I have to see projects like maybe a couple of times before I can actually appreciate it as a viewer. But then, I ain't gonna lie, when I did Dreamgirls, I literally hid under the chair <laughs> anytime certain scenes would come up. Uh, because we're bare. Everything is out there. And I know I put my everything in it. Like, it's just, like, honest and open. So a lot of times I don't go back and look at things. Like, I didn't even see hairspray until about almost a month later from – because obviously it was live and we couldn't see ourselves in real time. But, <laughs> but and I, I look back at it, but it always takes a lot out of me to be able to go back and look at things. But I learn from every experience, you know? Yeah. We're going to get some audience questions here in just a second. Um, you have a new job. I think it was just announced a couple weeks ago. I think, I, well, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a reality singing competition show. I think oh, some people the know about it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the voice. It's it seems you know if, if people think about where we first saw you, it's it's a very full circle kind of thing. Talk talk about just I mean talking to the producers and what the show wanted and what you want to bring to the show and talk about that a little bit. Wow. So for me, it has a different meaning because I come from a show like that, you know, which was American Idol, and I never would have guessed when I walked out there and I said, "Hello, my name is Shin Fatsu, and I'm a singer song," that I would one day be a coach, a judge, sitting on the other side, you know, helping some hopeful get their opportunity, you know? And it's precious to me because I know how life-changing it is. And so I just did it in the UK, and my J team, J Hood, we won. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And I surprised myself there because when my contestant, Mo, Mo who won, when he did, I bawled and cried and cried. And I was like, am I really crying right now? But, like, it, it just meant that much more to me because it's like, wow, I, this is life changing. This is major, you know? And then I feel like, I think I will be like the first coach to go on a show like this who has been on both sides, you know? And I can only speak from my experience and, and I feel like that can help coach them into, you know, the career that they're looking for. So I'm excited to be a part of it. I can't wait to get started. Well, since you, since you have been through, and just I think any performers used to getting notes and criticism and things like that, how are you at giving that to other performers, especially when they're young and you can see in their eyes that they just they just want to get there, you know? Yeah, see, but that's the difference with, like, the voice, though, because it's more like instead of I, – I like criticisms because that's when you can grow. If you don't know what's wrong, then how are you going to fix it? You know what I mean? Um, but it's not what you do, it's how you do it, so I wouldn't Simon them. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> – I wouldn't do the time thing to them, but just encourage them and point them in the right direction, you know, they, and and just help them bring out the, be, the their best selves. That's my thing. Like, and my team, you know, I want you to do you and own that and groom that and, and just, you know, because no one can do you better than you and just remind them of that. And I love to pull out the help people see, like, this is where you shine at. This is where you're great at. Now go shine, you know? help somebody's life change yeah, wow just like yours changed oh my god like i can't wait to do that and i love talent i love sharing the mic i love seeing other people sing i love just being around people who are passionate about what they do and you know what i mean and, and going after that so it's a dream job and then i'm always singing i get to have people singing to me that's all y'all want me to do of course i love it yeah 
we're getting back to hairspray real quick and then we'll get to some questions um there's there's a little bit of buzz like emmy buzz award buzz for your performance in this lord oh god oh my god <laughs> I mean, wow i mean thank you and I can't, when, when you're doing this, are you even thinking about what the reception's going to be, like how audiences are going to take it or how the industry's going to take it? Do you think about that stuff? No, everything I have ever done is because I love to do it. You know, and I think that's why we all do what we do is because we love to do it. But when we get in this business, sometimes, you know, our minds get clouded and everything else matters. But, and it's like, huh, let's remember why we do it is because we love to do it. And then, um, what else was I going to say to that? What did you ask me? Just, just if you think about if you think about how the industry might take a performance or even the audience, and the, it's yeah. award season, so oh, people and then, are talking yeah. about it. Also, another thing I was going to say to that is, my main goal, honestly, is I'm grateful for the opportunity. I don't care what I've done, what I've won. I treat everything the same way, and I appreciate it the same. And so, thank you. Um, I just want to make the powers that be that gave me that opportunity happy. That is always my goal. When I did Dream Girls, I was like, I don't want to disappoint Bill Cundin. I want to make sure they're happy. You satisfied? You gave me a job. I'm gonna do it to the fullest, and give you everything you want. Same with hairspray, and that's my focus. I don't never think about, okay, I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna win this, and I'm gonna do this. That is the furthest thing from my mind, <laughs> literally. Okay. Is there room on the shelf next to Mr. Oscar and next to some of the other? We could, we could make a space. We okay. could make a space. Right. Just making sure. Just making sure, making sure. They will look really good together. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Making Mr. Oscar's lonely. Oh my God. <laughs> um, Don't forget my SAG award. That's all right. Well, that's why I, many awards. Which, by the way, is yeah. the heaviest one of them all. It's 18 pounds. Y'all know is that. Is it really? I weighed okay. them all, okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we have a question from AJ. Where's AJ? Raise your hand. Hey, AJ. Um, as someone who was part of Hairspray Live, were you on the production? Awesome, okay. The, AJ, AJ says the production left a lasting impact on him. What was your takeaway from the production? What, what was, yeah. It was one of the top two, and this is a close top two, best experiences I've ever had in my entire career. Hands down. Yep. Cast and all. Every inch of it is like... Oh, it was just such a great experience, such great energy. It's just one of those like moments and times that you want to go back to, you know, or that you know you're in a special time, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, I think they're going to make a lot more, so I have a feeling maybe you'll be asked to do some other productions, whatever's coming up. Um, Kyla? Where's Ky hey, Kyla, right next Kyla. to AJ. Um, do you have a pre-show ritual that you just do every time before you go on, either in front of camera or on stage? Well, I definitely pray before I do anything. Um, I think that's it. Right, DJ? Oh, I start up my car, which is <coughs> That means it's like a winter, in the winter when you're car raggedy, you know, <coughs> and I'm ready to sing. Um, and long as I feel like I, I, I prepare myself in knowing my material, Oh, I got it. Like, okay, well, you don't have to think about it. Just live in the moment. And so I try to do through the whole rehearsal process. That's when I really, that's the pre-ritual, actually. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Monique, not, not that I'm guessing you're auditioning for things much anymore, but when, when you were auditioning, what was your process to prepare even for that? Because that's a, that's a scary thing to go that's, into that room. That's, I'm still scared of that. Yeah. I, I, um, I find that the hardest, it seems, to audition you know because sometimes you don't know what people are looking for yeah you always have that in the back of your head like, okay when you don't have a full uh, full understanding what the real just of the character is am i creating it um and then i like feedback so not all the time in auditions you get feedback like one of the first projects no the first project i ever auditioned for most people don't know that was rent yeah it, rent was right before dream girls and when I tell y'all, they put me right up out that room. And it was like, thank you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but then, and I hadn't had much experience with auditions. I didn't know what that meant because there was no feedback. But if you get feedback and you get the criticisms, then you can say, okay, well, let me tweak that. You might not want to hear it, but I, you know, it's like, okay, I'll take that. And then you can come again. But when you don't know, you don't know. So then what? You know? 
Um, but then by the time I had a little more experience in auditions, I realized like, oh, when they put you out of the room, that means it's a wrap. But <laughs> if they give you feedback and they invest in you, then that means you must be giving them something. You know what I mean? So I'm still filling out the whole audition process, and I don't think I'm that great at it, to be honest. I'm still learning the ropes of that. I know it's tough. It's um, tough. Even from where I'm sitting. Um, whether it was the beginning of your career, this is from uh, Tara, Tara. Tara? Hi. Um, whether, whether it was music, film, early part of your career, or even now, what keeps you motivated to keep going? Because the, you know, the, a career is ups and downs, and there's a lot of things that happen along the way. What keeps wow. you motivated? Well, I'm a workaholic, first of all. That's, this is all I do, sing, act, something. I just like pro progress. And I, it's as simple as I love what I do. And I realize, even when I'm not working, I'm still somewhere singing in the corner. So I'll be like, well, I might as well make money doing it. You know, <laughs> seriously, I'll do it in my sleep. Have some, oh, you were singing. I'm like, I didn't even realize I was singing. Or even acting, you know, stuff like that. And that's, acting helps you know, express yourself. And I love that, like being able to do that. So, and then most of all, what I love, one of the things I love most about what I do is being around. Everybody who's around us and what we do is an expert in what they do. And I always have a, a respect for people or find a respect for people when, for their craft when I see them passionate about it. And that inspires me and mine. Like, that's when we're most peaceful, when we're doing what we love to do. So when we're always surrounded by people, whether it's the cameraman, think about it, when it's closed, they be like, this material. And, they be, and it's the world's greatest thing. And it's like, well, if you're that interested in it, let me look at the material too. You know what I mean? Or the, the makeup artist, the eyelashes, all that makeup. You know, like sit in the room with a glam squad and see everybody is focused on one thing. And that's how I see this industry and what we do. The producers fascinated with what he does, the, the director, the actors, the lighting, the DOP, the, you know what I mean? The actors, we're all passionate about what we do. And that's what drives me to see everybody so driven by their passions. Yeah. Well, please keep doing what you're doing. And thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thanks thank everybody you. here. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> oh, okay, y'all.